Hello and welcome to episode 216 of the official EstablishTheRun.com podcast. My name is Adam Levitan and I am back as I am each week for another edition of Market Update. As always, this podcast is designed to get you up to speed quickly on recent average draft position, aka ADP movement in the fantasy football market. In the show notes, you can find a free link to charts and the full article on this topic from ETR, Director of Analytics, and the man behind all this, Michael Leone. All right, let's get into it because it is finally August. Peak draft season is rapidly approaching. Training camp news is popping. I'm reading hundreds of articles a day searching for one little nugget we can use to be better. Shout out to me. We will begin with this week's risers, and we again lead with Daryl Henderson, who is now up to 45th overall from 64th on FFPC and 50th overall from 82nd on NFFC. As I've noted previously, the running back the Rams end up adding here is really likely to be someone who is stone dust. Melvin Gordon deal seems really hard to see given the contract situation he has. And the rest of the running backs available, I mean, Sonny Michelle may get cut, Mark Ingram may get cut, Adrian Peterson, Le'Veon Bell are out there. They're just not big threats, I don't think, to Daryl Henderson. So we have a really explosive player who has been limited by injuries, but is now healthy, who was expected to specialize in the pass game this year anyways, on a very good team in the Rams who prefer to run the ball around the goal line. I have absolutely no problem using a late fourth, early fifth rounder on Daryl Henderson. Another obvious riser is Aaron Rodgers, and I really hope you all were listening to this pod the last few weeks as we've been imploring people to get ahead of ADP on Rodgers, Aaron Jones, Devontae, Big Bob Tanya, AJ Dillon, etc. Now that the Aaron Rodgers news is officially official, ADP on all these guys is screaming up. On Rodgers specifically, he's up to he's up like 25 to 30 spots across all formats as the quarterback eight. And we agree, we think he is the QB eight, but that is not the spot where we want to be drafting our quarterbacks this year. We want one of the elite dual threats, Josh Allen, Kyler, Lamar, etc. Or we like to wait for the Ryan Tannehill, Joe Burrow types, and or take swings late on Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Taysom Hill. Rogers TD rate, by the way, will almost certainly regress this year. I mean, he had 48 passing touchdowns on 526 attempts last year. It's just not sustainable, even for him. Kareem Hunt is the top riser in underdogs top. 100 up to 70th overall. I know some very sharp people who are in on Hunt. He's not someone I've personally been targeting. Even when Nick Chubb got hurt last year, I thought the way they used Kareem Hunt was still a bit meh. Still, I dig Kareem Hunt in best ball where he gives you usable weeks even when Nick Chubb is active and he does have ceiling pads if Nick Chubb goes down. Fourth riser is Traquan Smith and and yeah, I, I don't get this one. I mean, he's up to wide receiver 60 on underdog, which doesn't sound like a lot, but there's a lot of opportunity cost there. I mean, I'm not even convinced that Traquan Smith will lead Saints wide receivers and targets while Michael Thomas is out. Marquez Calloway, Deontay Harris, and other guys are going to get looks. Kamara and Troutman are obviously big threats. And then we have the likelihood of Taysom starting, reducing the volume and efficiency in the pass game. I mean, Traquan is an easy, easy pass for me where he's at going wide receiver 60 now. Give me Terrace Marshall, who, by the way, looks to have a real slot role for Carolina locked up. Give me Jalen Rager. Give me Rashad Bateman, Rondell Moore, Marvin Jones, Jacoby Myers. I could keep going on, guys. I would take shots on ahead of Traquan Smith. Let's get to this week's fallers. Biggest faller on underdog inside the top 100 was T. Higgins. And man, this one is tough. You know, I talked about it with Harmon on the last podcast. I love T. Higgins. I love the Bengals offense. But I prefer Jamar Chase over T. Higgins, and I prefer Tyler Boyd at cost, as he's going three rounds after T. Higgins. I mean, Higgins, even though he's been falling, he's going 47th overall still. Can Joe Burrow support all three of these guys? I think so, yes. You know, no tight end to suck up target share, really. They'll play very fast. They'll be among the leaders, I think, in passing rate over expectation. I'm hoping Higgins' ADP sinks a little deeper. And I do think, actually, in softer formats, like, in my home league or whatever, you will be able to get T. Higgins much, much, much cheaper than he is going in some of these sharper formats. But yeah, I would hope that I can get him 55th, 60th overall rather than 47th. 
Another surprising faller is Deami Brown, biggest faller on underdog outside the top 100. I think this is likely due to some camp buzz on Adam Humphreys, which is warranted in my opinion. I mean, Adam Humphreys and Ryan Fitzpatrick know each other from Tampa. Adam Humphreys consistently earns playing time. Even if we don't like him, coaches like him, quarterbacks like him. So I get it to some degree, but still plenty of upside on Deami at an ADP of 170 or so. He makes the flyer list for me. One that doesn't make any sense, one follower that doesn't make any sense is Taysom Hill. He's down to undrafted on NFFC. And you know, if you're drafting, I, I wasn't gonna bring this up, but if you're drafting this time of year, just generally speaking, using a roster spot on Trey Lance or Justin Fields or Taysom just makes so much sense. It's all profit, no downside, particularly in managed leagues where we can drop them if needed. Like these three quarterbacks are gonna smash their ADPs if slash when they start due to their rushing ability. We'll have a lot more information. There's just so much smoke around Trey Lance right now. Maybe even being able to start week one. Taysom, I think, is likely to start or at least a coin flip. Justin Fields is gonna make up ground quickly on Andy Dalton. So if you're in deeper formats, if you're in two QB formats, if you're in managed leagues where you wait on quarterback, there's just a lot of merit in this. I would not let Taysom Hill go undrafted. What I'm watching now is two things. First of all, the Carson Wentz injury and how it's going to affect Colts ADPs. It's going to tank, I think, the ADP, of particularly of Michael Pittman and Naheem Hines. And I think Jonathan Taylor is gonna take a hit as well. We'll discuss all this with Silva tomorrow, but for now, I'd be looking to take chances on Michael Pittman one to two rounds past his Wentz ADP. And given that Carson Wentz is expected back in five to 12 weeks, I think Jonathan Taylor is still a round two guy solid, maybe fringe round one, but note that he's a bit game script dependent. Still think Naheem Hines will be in there for hurry up and lots of pass down stuff. So Jacob Eason is not good for Colts chances of leading games, but we'll talk more about all this tomorrow with Silva. Second thing I'm watching is training camp reports. And I hope you're following me on Twitter. Just my name, Adam Levitan, all one word. I think I tweet out, or at least I try to tweet out what I think is notable from camp. There's a ton of stuff I read that is just fluff and BS and doesn't matter. I try to ignore that. Basically, what we bake into our rankings is what we think matters. We read and digest everything. We save you time by implementing what matters from camp. You know, that's what we're here for. But yeah, there's gonna be a lot of ADP movement based on training camp hype. We're here to tell you what matters and what doesn't for sure. Okay, that's gonna do it for this week's market update. If you don't have the draft kit yet, not sure what you are waiting for. It is just $34.99, includes everything we think you need to win your draft. If you're looking for our best deal, is indeed the bundle that combines the draft kit and in season for the lowest price by far we will have all season. Head to the subscribe page for more there. I'll be back tomorrow with Silva for training camp news reactions and top 150 changes. We'll be back with Silva Wednesday for our fades of the year. For, oh, and big one, Thursday, we'll be with Thorne for offensive line rankings. His rankings will be in the draft kit at the end of the week. So, for Jerry. For Leone Behind the Scenes, I am Adam. Good luck, everybody.